Welcome back. We're working on OAuthServer.net. Um, we're going to be uh, playing with the UI. Um, so let's go ahead and launch just those two projects. <clears throat> and we're going to start to build in the create for different clients, our CRUD services. So we only want the web app and we want the UI project. We'll start it up. Sorry, I, that's the old folder that this thing initially started in. Now I removed it. Let's see if that takes. Not yet. It's going to say the same error. So there's got to be like a uh, startup parameter in here. Oh, it's in the CS project. It says the spa root. Right here, we're going to change this to be web app. Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, the web app loaded. This is almost done. It's going to take a minute for it to do the compile. Give it just a second to finish. And there it is and you can see that it's successfully loaded data. So when I look at these, it just goes to the proper page, but I'm not sure that that's exactly what I wanna do. So we also have our grants that are set up here. So in, let's start over in grants, okay? So if I look here, I wanna change this code and we're gonna make it like, just a second, And I'm looking to see Matt select. There's the table. Doesn't look like it has anything special in it. So we're going to do a table with these grants. And I want to say that we have a table row here. And this is going to be a head, and it's going to say grant name, and then it's going to say we want to have the 
authorization response type and we want to have the token response type. Now after each one of these we want to have a button, right? So we'll add in another one here like this. And now I want to have another row, another column here which is going to be a button. And I want this to say it's a map primary and its color is going to be primary. And it's going to be a type equals button. And we'll call it a mat stroked button. And I want to say that this is going to say remove. And we also want to add in here that this has a click event called remove genre or remove uh, grant and we want to pass in my grant.id so over here now I can have a new function called remove grant which is going to pass in an ID and all this is going to do is call the HTTP service like that and this needs to be lowercase now if I look at the HTTP service we're going to add in here a new type called a request remove grant and it's going to be an ID we're going to do a this.http client.delete and we're going to do this at my grants. And then I want to pass in here the, hey, I've fallen hope, welcome back. Yeah, I found a Rob. How are you doing, my subscriber? Welcome to the channel. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us today. If I change it to use this one, can't I do like an ID in here or something? And then I want to subscribe on this. which is going to be my result. So when I issue a delete on the back end, we're going to go to the grants controller. And in here, I'm going to add in a new public virtual asynchronous task called delete asynchronous. And it's going to pass in here an ID, which will be a GUID. And we want to get this from the query. This is going to be an HTTP delete. I need to inject my data access layer. Not today. Not a command. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have a bot running. Sorry. I need to get back on that, but I don't I don't have an excuse for it. I'm just been working on other projects, you know what I mean? And now I should be able to do a await data access layer dot. So now we need to add in a new function in here called a task of a bool called remove called delete grant asynchronous and it's going to pass in a good for the ID and we're going to say if we await this delete grant asynchronous of my ID, then I want to return a no content. Otherwise I want to say
Otherwise, I want to say return bad request. Do we have like a not found of my ID? So that's easy enough. So on this side now, our result is just going to be a 204. So I want to say if my, and this is going to be a type of I think it's an HTTP response. So can't I just do for now, we'll just do a console.log of results so I can see what's in it. Happy Sunday, Sound of Gaming. How are you doing? Most honest answer. <laughs> Sets up following up. Thanks for coming hanging out with us this morning, follow, uh, Sound of Gaming. So is subscribe the same as JScript then? Yeah, pretty much exact. Well, this is, this is TypeScript. So subscribe is, this is RxJS it's here. And yeah, it's the same sort of idea where I dispatch or I uh, uh, have events that fire and then we subscribe to them. So this is gonna be this.httpservice.request remove grant of my ID. Now we'll go back to the app. It's gonna say that this doesn't have an implementation, which is correct. So we'll add in this, and this needs, that's right. And we're gonna make this a, a virtual asynchronous task. And we're going to do a var grant equals await context.grants.first or default asynchronous where my ID equals ID. If my grant does not equal to null, then I want to say await, I'm sorry, it's just context.grants.remove my grant. And then we'll return await context.save changes asynchronous is greater than zero. That's it. Give it a run. Santa Gaming says, I'm good. How are you? Kind of a lazy Sunday. It snowed a lot. Oh, man. That sounds not too bad. Um, we don't get snow here. I live in Southern California. I'm doing great today. Uh, I'm excited to get this UI completed and then uh, push this thing out onto Docker. I'm ready to move on to another project. Ah, okay, I'm have a wait. <laughs> hey, let this load. Okay, when I look at this, now I have a typo. You can see that we have this Matt Raise button. I've been following your YouTube videos when I can. Thanks, man. That's awesome. Looks like you're making good progress. Yeah, we finished the functionality of the app. So the app itself is done, but there's no way to add data to the app right now, which is what we're changing. So it gets unhappy at me when I make changes like that. Um, so we have to reload it. Yeah, I'm going to start to do this in two separate projects because this is going too slow. Nah, it's all right. Okay, so wait for this to load here. This looks fine. I'm going to take a quick peek here at my material table angular so all we use is we have to add a data source we change the whole table uh, type so let me look for this mat cell because I'm sure I have an example of this available to me
perfect. Okay, and I can use that as the example for this. So this is loaded now. Here's my OAuth service. If I look at grants, we have the proper type. If I was to do a remove, it says 405. Four oh four. So it doesn't know the route here. We'll reload it. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a material table. We're essentially going to make one solid crud type. Understand why it keeps doing that because the routing won't let me go directly to there that's why so if I do a remove delete HTTP localhost grants 404 I got a response code here. If I look at the whole thing, you should be able to do an OK on it. So over here we can do a if result.ok is true, then I want to do this.store.dispatch. And I want to do a new remove grant. And it's going to be my app state. It's going to be my ID. This is a type of HTTP response. Just like that. And now in my uh, reducers here, we're going to look at this one for grants. And you just have set grants. So we're going to add in a new one here called remove grant. It's called remove grant, like that. And we'll add another one up here for remove grant. like this and then down here we want to have a remove grant and then in my reducer we're going to add a new type here like this to my remove grant And this is a remove grant. We're going to get the ID, and then this is going to be my grant to delete. And then of my state, we're going to slice it like that. We 
And so now we can add in reducers, remove grant. Now, one of the things I don't like is that I don't get anything back that says that if this works or doesn't work, but we'll worry about that in a moment. The larger issue was that the delete didn't take. So let's try it again. I only have eight days left until my last semester of school starts. That's awesome. I got intro to Java. My college loves their intro to programming classes. Yep, yep, yep. Same with the one that I went to. Although I didn't go to school for programming, I did for one semester. Advanced C-sharp.net, that sounds great. And systems analytics and design, UML designs, the SDLC life cycle planning. I hope it's a good semester. It should be. That sounds like it's going to be uh, kind of like the best one because it sounds like you're going to be looking at things from a really high level. There it is. Click the remove. Failing. So if I change this to be like this, And try it again. It's like the delete isn't taking. So let me look real quick at ASP.NET Core. Delete not working. There we go. That's what it is. And then don't you have to do something with the route for that? Yeah, and here you have to do slash ID. I'm gonna make, about to make tea because I love tea. I love tea as well, that sounds great. I broke all my teapots though. Maybe we should do a donation goal for a new teapot. Wait for it to load. How in the world? I don't know, man. I'm not the best uh, at washing them, I guess. I could use like one made out of like something uh, not breakable. I don't understand why this is being hit now. Instead of this one. understand why that's being hit like that.
I just got a new tea tumbler things from my dad. That sounds nice. This is still effed up. Try it one more time. It's like uh, it's hitting the wrong controller now. Dad and his wife, I love it because it supports hot and cold. That's really nice. That's cool. Hot and cold container. That would have been great when I used to do uh, hydrologics work out in the forest. So I'm not the biggest fan of the way that these are coupled because it makes uh, the ASP.NET backend take a forever to load. So I almost want to like do this in the traditional manner and then add it together. There we go. Now when we go to grants, it looks good. We do the remove. Add this back. Let this reload. There it is. Now the delete that got passed is an ID of nothing. So that's gonna fail. Right? Remove grant here. Grant.id. That grant should have an ID, so let's do an alert here of the ID. Looks like this is now working correctly. It is passing the ID, it's not here. Try it again. I'm going to look at another project in just a moment. Let's see. Oh, that uh, started to break on me, I think, right? Hello? I don't know. This sounds funny now. All right, let's see. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So as soon as I add in these slashes, then it starts to get the paths wrong. So why don't we cheat a little bit and I'll add in here a new controller with read write actions. Now I can just look to see how it's doing the delete here with no route and no from query. Let's try it again. And so now what I want to do is I want to start to get this table switched over to Angular. So if I look at my cart component over here, what I want to do is I want to add in on my table, we want to say it's a map table with a data source 
equals data source And I want to say that it has a class of mat elevation Z8. And now my table is totally different. So instead of doing it like this, we're going to use this little bit. So my column name is grant name. It's called grant name. element because we're doing a let over it is called grant name and then we're doing another one here for my authorization response type like this, authorization response type. And then we do another one called token grant type. And then we do one more for the delete, right? We'll leave it like this. We need to add in these at the bottom for the displayed columns and the rows. And then this button, we want to do one more. We're going to call it remove grant. And we'll move this button into this. Now we can close this up. Okay, that's the HTML side. We're going to say here h1 called grants. And I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it as a P, and then I'm going to say it's a class equals mat h1 or whatever, right? And if I look at my I want to look at angular type uh, what is it called type it's called um, Matt H1, something like that. Typography was the word I was looking for. So it's Matt dash H1. Okay. And so now here we need to do the displayed columns. And that's going to be a string array. And I want this to be grant type authorize response type token grant type. And the last one was remove grant and now I need to have a data source is a new mat table data source of my I grant Down here on a knit, I need to do this dot data source dot data 
equals this dot grants. And let's just see if this works. So let's rerun this. And this one doesn't have a paginator. Right here is where this is happening, but it's not doing a paginator on it. When this thing is loading, It doesn't look like this is working now. Try it one more time. Still nothing. It's like it's not. What's wrong? It's not telling me anything about what is wrong. If I look at my app module, I'm even bringing in my materials module. So is my payload controller ever getting hit? Let's start there. Because it's almost like I'm missing something. Let me look over here. Feel like we need to include the forms module. We want to bring in the toaster module. We want to bring in the NGX loading module. So what I want to do is I want to say toaster angular ngx toaster and we also want to do ngx loading 
module or something like that. Then we can bring in the toaster module and the loading module. So this should be working, which is odd. If I was to look over here and add in a route, it just goes to nowhere. And this is my payload controller. My grants controller has an ID on the delete. No clients controller. Let's delete this values controller and let's try it again. And I'm going to start looking at this in, oh, here we go. They all to compile, it says. Let's reload it. Cannot get. Let's let this run. It says failed to compile. Hey there, Fireball the Ferret. How are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Hey, thank you so much there, Go Pirate Software. Appreciate all of the support. Tell me about all of your work. Uh, how are you guys doing? In case you're new, thank you for that follow, Anode KK. In case you're new, my name is Rob. I uh, stream during, week, during the week, a little bit on the weekends. We're working on our application called OWASERVER.NET. Thank you, Twisted Mix. Kablam, says Go Pirate Software. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. So this application that we've created here, it's a... Um, <laughs> thank you so much there, Foxy Owl. Selenity. I appreciate that support. This application is a uh, one that we're going to be posting up on Nougat. So we have a couple of different packages. Dancing with my demons. Thank you so much for that follow. <laughs> this is awesome, guys. If you look here, the JWT.net, this is only what we're using to validate our tokens and to generate new tokens. Thank you, the dysfunctional fam jam. I appreciate that. Go Pirate Software says, hope you're having a great day. I'm going to go get some food. That sounds great, man. Thank you for the raid. I appreciate that. Billy Legaff, thank you so much for that follow. So this JWT token is only responsible for generating tokens, decoding take tokens, validating tokens, generating authorization codes, and creating uh, and, and exchanging authorization codes. It's got its own data access layer, which we're injecting and creating here, which only has a couple of functions on it. The second method it, class is this OAuth server.net core. This one just has our models in it, as well as our application database context, and then an error handling middleware. The guts of the project lands in this OAuth server.net. And so where this is coming from is identity server four. Um, <laughs> that follow alert, never mind it stopped. I was gonna say it was never gonna stop now. I feel like an <laughs> Hi Hubuda. Hi Hub E und awesome. Appreciate that. Uh, hello, Josh Powelson. Thank you so much for that follow. Um, so if you look here. Uh, this one is replacing identity server four. If you take a look at the identity server for GitHub, you can see that as of October 21st, they started a new company 
and it's called Duende Identity Server, and it's under a commercial license. So this is going to be uh, very challenging uh, for me because all of my applications are built on a identity server. So that's why we've created this OAuth server. It uses all the OAuth 2.0 protocols, including resource owner, password credentials, client credentials, uh, implicit and authorization flow. We're gonna add in PKCE as well. And then uh, this one is all wrapped up into one application here called web app. Um, we're gonna have it so it's a Docker container, so you can just run the Docker container and then point it to your database and it automatically scaffolds when you run the project. Um, and then also uh, you can download the source and work with it manually. Andre Apolari, thank you so much for that follow. I appreciate that. It can't stop, says Joth Pallison. I usually program such stuff in Python, says Anode. Yep, so this one is a um, just a microservice, so you can use it uh, just straight from Docker. You don't need to come in and work with the C-sharp at all. And this is the web app that we're creating with it. Um, and I ran into a little bit of a problem here with toaster service not being able to find anything. So let's do a npm remove. Uh, how do I do that? We need to remove that toaster package that I added in there. So I want to do a npm remove. And then we want to do a uh, toaster for Angular. And I want to remove this because this was failing hardcore. Oh, it was saying that it needs this animations. That's why. Thank you for all the raiders, says a fallen hope. Oh, toaster service probably say, did you put the bread in first? <laughs> toaster service is a, it's a um, notification service. Let's try it again with the ng serve. And then we need to do these few little bits, but we'll add this in in just a moment. So same issue. So let's just go ahead and remove this because I'm, I'm, I'll work with the toaster service in just a few minutes. So we'll do a npm uninstall and it was called ngx toaster, right? Let's go ahead and run it again. The Mac is already running, which is good. Same issue. So under my node modules, under npm toaster, we're just going to straight remove it. Give it a second. Quite a feat to try and replace IS4, says Ultramark. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. So the OAuth protocol is set up. That's really, really straightforward. Where it gets more complicated is the OIDC layer. Um, this is not deleting, is it? So let me reveal this in Explorer. Close that up. Jump into node modules. Get rid of NGX toaster. Oh, lovely. Absolutely lovely. Oh, I wanted to do this in an elevated terminal. And I want to do a we want to do a uh, RM is it just a delete 
and GX toaster. Didn't quite take it. So can I go into it and do a Yeah, it's not letting me delete it, which is great because that's basically my project is built on it. So let me just do this real quick. Hey, bugger. Go. How are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Anyone that wasn't from the raid, be sure to check out Go Pirate Software. Thank you, A Fallen Hope. I appreciate that very much. This is uh, very annoying that now I can't get my UI to get rid of that node package. I just got it. Okay, try it again. Hey there, Bugger Gogger, Bubble Gogger. How are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Thank you again for the support. I appreciate that follow. Um, we need to open this project back up now. And then also in the web app and the uh, code. Next time I do this, I'm definitely going to keep them separated because this is very slow at the moment to uh, load it through Visual Studio. Here's Visual Studio and we should be back in business. So when I run this again now, and then over here we'll do the same thing. Anode K says, I don't particularly like to develop in C-sharp myself because you can't really cross-platform the op. It's really hard to cross-platform a .NET app. Now, I absolutely disagree with you, Anode KK. Um, I run 100% of my .NET applications on Linux, um, and I run half of them on Raspberry Pis using ARM and half of them in Docker containers. Um, with .NET Core, everything is open source and cross-platform, so it's really, really, really powerful, and they're much more stable and performant when I run them on Linux. Hey, we want to go into the web app folder and do an ng... What package do you use for cross-platform? It's native. It's native in .NET Core. The MVC stuff, um, the, the old .NET was not cross-platform, but Core is. NGX loading now is the same issue. Same issue can't find at Angular Core. It's like all my node modules are missing. Oh, I know what the problem is. I know why all of these are failing. Because I'm not in the right app. Okay, so we're gonna go into here and open this up. Delete this node modules. Because in this web app, this is where we're using them. So if I was to open this up here, and then we remove out of the module the ngx loading and the toaster module, and I do an ng serve again,
And we'll open this back up here as well. We should be running again now. Good. So now it's compiled successfully, finally. So now we'll run the back end. Maybe I didn't see it correctly, but it looked like when it removed more than one line when you did delete. Where did you see that at? Oh yeah, I've experienced only with .NET Framework because of the legacy software in my previous company. That makes sense. What shortcut did you use to remove the whole block? Uh, which block are you talking about when you said that you wanted to remove the module? Oh, here? This bit? I'm just using uh, Control X to clear that out. Wait for this thing. Is it going to actually get this time? So something bad happened with material, I'm thinking. So if I jump back into my grants, which is the one that we added material to when all this stopped working, I just comment everything out here. I do not understand what happened in the app. If I go to localhost 4200, it's not even loading now. Clients, grants, router, outlet. I do not understand what happened to this app. I'm going to have to rescaffold it, I think. This is crazy. Maybe look more will I learn. I need to learn this today. Thanks. If you use VIM, you can do D5. Yeah, I like VIM for that as well. I've had a lot of issues when trying to install library into a default React.net project. Still have no idea what the issue was. Yeah, this is very bizarre. Uh, what is happening here? Um, I'm a little confused as to what. I did to break it. Let me remove the forms module. If I look at my get, this all looks fine. Everything here looks fine. Okay, so what's the error I'm getting here? Unclosed H1 tag and grant. Oh, that's literally it. Okay, sorry, I did too many changes there at one time, and that's what happens, you know what I mean? All right, here we go. So now, payload, 4200 payload is not going to find it, which is fine, but that one will. So we don't want this one, we want this one. There are my apps. I can look at the grants. 
Okay, it says definitions for header, footer, and row cannot be to columns. Which columns should be rendered? So back over here, if I look at my grants. Here, if I look at this, we don't have these last lines any longer, so we need to add those in. Those two. And now we can check it again. Second day I rage quit when I tried for the last time it worked. Hate when stuff like that. Would one want to know what the issue was? Googled it later but couldn't find and gave me some conclusion on why it happened. That's my day worth of work done. I pruned my following channels. I was following over 100, now I'm down to 35 and only have notifications on for seven. That's pretty good. Okay, I'm still not getting any errors here. But it's also not showing the table. So that's because in my grants.ts, I need to move this after grants changes. So here we're going to do a console.log of grants. Would help if I spelled it right. Could not find column ID grant type. Because it's called grant name. There we go. And now we're actually in here. So what I want to do is I want to add in now some SCSS uh, to get the uh, formatting right. And I'm looking up what that convention is just a second here. It's like this. We do mat column and then it's a grant name. And we can put multiple of these. I think it's a comma, right? And then it's a uh, mat column authorize response type and then a mat column called token grant type and then a mat column called remove grant and I want to do a padding is a zero pixels and then we'll do a five pixels and then a zero pixels and then a five pixels And that looks a lot better. Okay, it looks like that we want to put this inside of some kind of a container. So I wonder, I don't think I have Bootstrap installed on it, um, but I'm just curious. Can I do a div class equals container? No, but that's okay. So this is looking pretty good. So now um, I want to add in a uh, model, which is going to be a confirmation model, okay? What extensions do you use for Visual Studio Code? Uh, just what comes with Angular, nothing, uh, nothing beyond that really. Mobile push in Windows for when a channel goes live. Oh, I didn't know we have it for desktop. I don't use a mobile app. What extensions? And I set it up to pop a notification on my phone. This is a lock type of thing. I only use the mobile app when I'm on break at work. So here we can get rid of this container. And now what I want to do is 
we need to add in a confirmation modal. So to do that, hey, the dysfunctional fam jam, thank you so much for that host with one viewer. I appreciate that support, buddy. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to pop them into the chat. So if I look at this one, we're going to make a new folder in here called ng generate component, and I'm going to call it shared modals confirmation modal. Okay, and on here we're gonna have a, hey there, the fireball, the ferret. Thank you so much for that, for that host with one viewer. I appreciate it. I added you to my auto host. I love programming. Thank you, man. The only thing that we stream here is, uh, is, is programming. We do a lot of work in Unity, Unity 3D, and ASP.NET, uh, making web applications as well. Uh, we kind of just try to hit at everything. I appreciate that support. So here we're gonna do this as a P. And then I'm going to do a class equals my uh, mat h1. And then I want to say it's a mat dialog called my title. And we're going to pass in here something called a data.title. Okay, now I need to have a div with my mat dialog content. And on this, we're just going to have a data.message. And then finally, I need to do a div with a mat dialog actions. And we're going to say it's a center content. And in this, I want to have a button, which is a mat stroked button with a color equals primary. And my appearance is outline. Okay, and then I want to say that we have a click event here called on no click. And then in here, we're going to have a cancel message. And then I'm going to have another button, which is going to be a matte stroked button with a color equals accent. And we're going to say it's outlined. And I want to say it has an event called Matt Dialog Close equals my data dot is confirmed. And then we want to set my this to my folk my initial focus with the C D K focus initial. And in this one, we just want to have a data.confirm message. Okay. So now over in our TypeScript, we've got to make a type for this. So I'm going to call it in here in my models. I'm going to make a new type called interface I confirmation modal data. And in this, we had a title, which is a string a message, which is a string, a is confirmed, which is a boolean, a cancel message, which is a string, and a confirm message, which is a string. So in here now, we need to change the constructor to say that it has a private dialog reference, which is a mat dialog reference to my confirmation mod modal component. And then I also want to do an at inject here of a mat dialog data like that. And it's a private data instance of my I confirmation model data. And then we're going to assign that here. Data equals this dot data instance. Like that. 
Let's add in the missing types here. And then I also need to have here a on no click, which is going to be this dot dialog reference dot close. Now we're almost done here. So to, in order to get this confirmation dialog to work, I have to add it to my app module in the entry components. Second, yeah. So we add entry components here, and then I'm gonna add confirmation modal component. Not sure why my one viewer is LOL. I'm offline. I think I have a bot in my channel. I'm completely. I completely understand. <laughs> Sorry, I'm adding a confirmation modal using material. So it's a little bit convoluted with why it's set up like this. But now that we have our entry material or our entry point, I can use this by doing a. like this in grants when we do our remove grant I can do a const for my confirmation modal data it's an I confirmation modal data and it's a uh, title is confirm delete the message is are you sure you would like to delete this grant type? The is confirmed is false. We need to do that. The confirm message is confirm and the cancel message is cancel. Okay, now to populate that modal, I need to do a injection of it, right? Just a second. I need to pass in here a mat dialog, private mat dialog called mat dialog. And then we do a <clears throat> this dot mat dialog dot open and it's called a confirmation modal component. And now I can pass in some config here if I want. So I could say the width is 250 pixels and my data is my confirmation modal data. Like that. And then I subscribe on it. Confirmation modal dot after close. We want to subscribe a result here, which is if my result does not equal to undefined, then I want to do a Remove grant. Okay, let's test it. Cannot read property ID of undefined. Because it's no longer a grant ID, it is a element.id. I've dabbled in most languages to the point I can read it, but I'm a loss at how to write it. Very basic skills. Yeah, let's try it again. There's the confirmation dialog. Now these colors are hideous. So let me go change this to be a If I look at my material buttons, this 
this is not what I want. This is what I want. I want to look at the raised ones. Matt raised a button. And we want this to be primary. Look at that again. Perfect. So if I do a remove, it hits. We passed in the ID, it deleted it, and it's done. Now it never removed it here, but if I reload the page, you can see that it's gone. So why didn't that update? If I look here at my component, I'm subscribing on those grants. Cannot read property okay of null. So if I look at my call, I want to do a console.log of my result. What keyboard do you use? Sounds like a razor with pl clicky blue keys. Nope, this is uh, by Bloody, and uh, it's just uh, springs because um, it uses uh, UV lights to detect when the when the keys are pressed. I used to have a Logitech G910. I gave it to a buddy of mine when he uh, advanced to uh, senior programmer. But I don't like the uh, I don't like the, uh, the the loud clicky keys. Those Romer G's are pretty nice. Okay, so if I look at this one again, and I run it, and I do the delete. I still didn't get a response back, did I? So let's rebuild this one and relaunch the back end. Yeah, I like keyboards. I'm with you on that, A Fallen Hope. Let this reload. I'm going to let it recreate my database. Razor Black Widow, got that one. Asus Strikes Flare, never tried that. Logitech G50, just purchased a ZSA Moonlander. I've never tried a Moonlander. It's gonna take just a second to see the database here. Okay, there it is. We look at grants. Here they are. We're going to watch this again. Do a remove. My response comes in as a null. So if I try that again, Without that, it 
It removed it. It still came back as a null. So what if it came back as a not found? Because I, I want it to be a, we want to do a Angular CLI HTTP client return status code. We need to do this. I know exactly what I'm looking for. Cause I'm looking for the one for the delete. this. So I think that's it. So we'll just try it out. Yeah, that should do it. So back over here, we try it again. Where did it go? There it is, we got our HTTP response here with a status text of OK and a status of 204. So I wanna say, if my status result.status equals 204 and this is an HTTP response But it won't let me do that because I don't have a type. Which is for the body. So we could just do this response base. And that's it. I think it was the S out of the type as in UDP or TCP. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Type as in UDP or TCP? I'm confused. Okay, that looks good now. So when we delete it, we get the confirmation and it deletes successfully. Okay, so I don't know if I want to have a new grant, but let's just add one in for S and G's right now. So I'm going to create a new component called ng generate component called grant and in and in this one hold on you said you didn't have a type i'm just wondering if that's because you're running on local host oh um no, no, it was in uh, here, this response base. If I look at just a regular HTTP response, 
it's requiring a generic type to be passed in for the body right here. But I don't have a type for the body that I'm passing in. So I'm using response base instead, which does not have that, but still has my status code. Okay. So now that we've generated this grant component, I want to, in my routing, add in a new component called grant with a ID and then a grant without an ID. And in my grants page, I'm going to have a button up here, which is going to be a one of these. And I could put this in a mat form. I'm sorry, just call it a form group. And this one is going to be primary mat raised button. And this is going to say it's going to be a router link to and this is going to be create new grant and then over here I want to say router link yep that looks right Grant. I have a pretty beginner question to ask. What would be the best language to start learning that has the ability to develop games, but also the availability for coding software? Um, C++ or C Sharp? If you want to use Unity, C Sharp. If you want to use Unreal, C++. I find that C Sharp is a little bit more... Okay, so it changed the URI, but it didn't change the component because in my routing module, I forgot to change this to be a grant component. And Java and C Sharp are very similar. Okay, so now we're in the grant section. So in this, we need to have a couple of different fields in here. If I look at my grant, it's got a grant name. So we're gonna say this is a P and a class equals mat H1. And we're gonna say that this is going to be a no P here. And then in grant, I need to have in my constructor, I need to subscribe to that. Second. Here it is. So in here, I need to have in my init, we're going to do this dot route dot params dot subscribe. And it's going to be these parameters. And if I look at my route, that's going to be a private route called a activated route. And I'm going to want to have my route subscription here, which is a subscription. 
And so I'll do this as a this dot route subscription equals this. We need to have an ng on destroy where we unsubscribe it. Now I need to subscribe my variable for the ID. So we're going to do a const ID equals my params of ID. I'm going to add a little note here that says that if I use the plus parameters, it converts it to the numbers. And that's it. And so up here, I'm going to say that we're going to have a ID is a string. And we can say this dot ID. Now what I want to do is I also want to have my grants. like that. And then we need to have the store, which is called a private store called a uh, store and it's of my I app state. And so in here, we're going to do a this dot store dot select my grants and we want to subscribe on that like this. And we want to say this dot grants equals grants. Is that doing that in the other component? No. So like that. And then up here now I need to have a new this dot Grant subscription equals that. And we want to have that down here. I also need to have the on destroy. Okay, and so now that you have your grant here, we want to say const grant equals my grants dot find the one where the ID equals this dot ID. And I want to say if my ID does not equal to undefined, we'll just say if my ID and my And we want to make sure it's not equal to nothing. And then we're going to assign the grant. And then we have a couple other fun, uh, uh, fields in here, which are grant name, authorization, response type, token grant type. And we're going to do this dot grant name equals grant dot grant name. This dot authorization response type equals for your grant dot authorization response type. This dot token grant type equals grant dot token grant type. And that's it. So we need to add those here. We're going to say. ngf equals my ID and my ID does not equal to nothing. 
then I want to say edit grant or I want to say create grant and now I need to add in the text boxes for it So we do it like this with this map form field. And come on, come on, there we go. Um, if I look at my grant up here, I wanna add in a map card. Okay, so now we have an input. It's going to be a form control. My ID is going to be grant name. My placeholder is going to be grant name. The name is going to be grant name. The ng model is grant name. And it's not disabled. And it is required. We're going to have another one here for the authorization response type. And then we're going to have one more for the token grant type. Like, oh, come on. My soundboard is breaking. All right. Token grant type goes here, 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 and here. And then same thing like we had on the uh, the mm, model, the modal. I want to add in these two buttons. And we're going to say that this is going to be a cancel. And this one's going to say create. We want to say click on this one. We want to go to my router link is equal to my grants. And this one is going to be a create grant. So we'll add in a function here called create grant and we're going to say alert create grant here. Okay, so now I need to add in the form module. Now these things are not in a column, so we're going to add in a new type here in my styles.css. And I want to call this a Flex vertical vertical container. And all this is going to be is a display which is called flex. My flex direction is going to be a column. We're going to give it some padding of 5px across the board. And we'll say it's got a flex of 0 and 1. Okay, that didn't take because... Come on, microphone. 
That didn't take because... Testing. Maybe I need to do this. See if that's any better? I don't think so. The gain is off on that one. So if I, just a second. Let's try that and see if that's a better connection. So now I need to add this container to the grant page. I'm not sure this is where I want this to go. We're going to just see what this looks like first. Um, I don't see the change here. Is it because Styles isn't getting re-compiled? I see class vertical container. Oh, it's being overridden by Matt Card. So, in here, move this to be here. And then down here, I can probably do a Let's see, don't you have like a mat card title? And then a mat card content. And then a mat card actions. Okay, it's getting closer. Move this to be a div here. No, it's the whole board is breaking. Okay, and now I want to set this to have a maximum width of I'm going to say that it has a grant card here has a max width of we'll say 400 pixels. And there it is. So now I can create a new grant here and we can say it's like implicit and my authorization response type is going to be nothing and the token grant type will be password. It doesn't have a token grant type and this one will be token or something. And then we have our create grant. So when we issue the create grant, we're going to look at my HTTP service and I'm going to have a new function in here. And it's called a request create grant. And this is going to be an I grant. that. And all I want to do is this.http client.post of my iGrant 
to my grant and I want to do the grant and then I want to subscribe on the grant which is I grant and then we're going to do a if my grant exists then I want to do this dot store dot dispatch a new add grant of my grant so in the reducers we need to add in here a create grant and then down here we want to have a create grant which is going to pass in an I grant we want to have a create grant and in the reducer I'm going to add one in right here, call it a create grant, and this is going to be called a add grant new state, and then you want to sort that by my grant name. And then we want to do that. Okay. So now in my grant component, When we have the save, I want to say if my this.id and it's not this.id does not equal to that, then we want to say this is an update. Otherwise, I want to do this as a create, and it's going to be this.http. We need to add in the private HTTP client called HTTP service. And I want to do this.http.createGrant. And we want to make a new grant up here, which is called, we'll call it a request. And we're going to do the ID equals this dot ID, the grant name equals this dot grant name, the authorized response type equals this dot authorized response type, and the token grant type is this dot token grant type. In this one, we're going to do another one called a. We're just going to call that create grant, and this one's going to be called remove grant. And then I want to get one here called update grant, which is going to pass in this update, which is called a put. And then this is going to be a update grant, which again in the actions we need to add in the update grant. And then down here we want to add in the update grant like this, which is going to be a grant. 
and then we'll add it down here as a update grant. And then in the reducers, I want to add in the update grant. And this is going to be an update grant. And this is a grant type. And then a update grant new state. This is going to be my grant to modify. Like that. So back over here in grants, we're going to add in this.http.update grant. Thank you so much, Apollo. I super appreciate that, man. Okay, so that's done. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to add it to the back end. So in here, under grant, I need to add in here a public virtual asynchronous task called a create asynchronous a public virtual asynchronous task called update asynchronous. This is going to be a HTTP update. Called a put. And I want to pass in here a GUID for the ID and then a, if I look at my models, I don't have one there. If I look in the UI project, we have a grant DTO. If I was to look at that scaffolded controller one more time, The update, it wants this in the from body, and then also with the ID. And when I look at the data access layer here, we want to have a task of a bool called update grant asynchronous, which is going to be a grant DTO. And then we also want to have a task of a bool called a create grant asynchronous of a grant DTO. So if my await data access layer dot update grant asynchronous of my grant. And I want to say if my ID equals my grant dot ID and that is the case. Then I want to return here an I action result of a return no content. Otherwise return bad request of my grant. My route here is going to be ID. This one is an HTTP post of my route, just like that. And all we're going to do is the grant DTO. 
And I want to do a if my await data access layer dot create grant asynchronous of my grant. Return created. Otherwise, I want to return bad request of my grant. Created requires a URI and a value. So we can do that. And I think if I look at this project, I have an example of this. second here I was almost positive I had it in here we have a created at action, which we're going to say is a create grant. And this needs to be a I action result. And that's it. Let's run it. It's going to tell me I need to update the data access layer here. So we have a public virtual asynchronous task of a bool called update grant asynchronous of a grant DTO. And we're going to do a grant equals await my context dot grants dot first or default asynchronous where the ID is equal to my grant dot ID. So if my grant does not equal to null, then I want to do my Then what I want to do is I want to say entity dot grant name equals grant dot grant name and my entity dot authorize equals grant dot authorize and my entity dot token grant type equals grant dot token grant type and then my timestamp equals date time dot utc now my context dot grants dot update my entity and then I want to do a return await context dot save changes asynchronous is greater than zero the create is just as easy public virtual asynchronous task of a grant DTO called create grant asynchronous And you're going to do a entity equals new grant. And again, it's the grant name is the grant name. The token grant type is the token grant type. The authorized type is the authorized. And then it's a context.grants.add my grant, my entity. And then I want to do a re if my await context.save changes asynchronous is greater than zero, then I want to return a new grant DTO, which is going to be a ID equals entity.id, the grant type equals entity.grant type, the token is the entity.token type, the authorize is my entity.authorize, and my timestamp equals entity dot timestamp. If I look at this, we already have a mapper set up. Right there. So I could actually just do this as a mapper dot map to my grant DTO of my entity.
like that. Now I need to look at my context because for grants, we want to say that you can search here and you can search here. And we want a, we're saying that the And we want the grant name to also be unique. So now I'm going to set this as my startup project. We'll do a add migration, another small change. in that project. That's odd. Let's go ahead and let this rescaffold the database. So I just deleted it. Now I'll run it again. Okay, we'll do a start up the UI here. A second to start. Okay, we look at the grants page, it looks good. We do the remove. That's good. We do a create. Failed to load with a 404. Because it needs to go to plural grants. Try that again. There it is. Grant is here. We have everything. It didn't get my authorized response type. So why wouldn't have got the authorized response type? If I look here, it's because it's the wrong name.
it should be a authorized response type. You can see it's been created. You can remove it. Okay, if I look at this one again, there it is. It creates it. Now, when we click the save, I want to, do I want to navigate away? Probably because, just a second. Yeah, when we do this, we want to do a this dot router link. Uh, I think I already have an example of this. Yeah, this dot router. So we're going to add in here a private router, which is a router. Then I can do this dot router dot navigate, and we're just going to navigate to grants. And there you can see it's been added. Okay, we have to do the edit now. So to do that on my grant, hey there, DJ Al MOC Cruz Jr. How are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for that follow. If you have any questions about what I'm working on, please don't hesitate to pop them into the chat. Appreciate the support. Also, I put all these videos up at youtube.pixelhorrorstudios.com, so make sure you check that out. If I look here, at grants I want to do this as a a with a router link to my and I want to go to grant and I want to pass in my element.id. When I look at the grants component, Let's see if this works first. It the way it works. First try. Put four oh five at grants. So in HTTP service, the update isn't working because Because this one, we want to change this to be at a like that.
because we're still waiting for this one to get hit. There it is. So we got the grant with the ID. My timestamp is screwed up. That doesn't matter. And we get the confirm. Now it didn't update that record, did it? Redux. So if I look at the 204, we're getting no content back. So we want to do the same thing we did here. Like that. And we're going to do this as a result, which is a HTTP response base. And so if your result.status equals 204, then we update it. And that updates now. So now we have all CRUD services set up, which is great. So now we need to look at what's going on with clients. When I do my controller here for clients, I don't have anything at the moment. It should be coming in through payload. So where this is coming in here in clients, Right. Interesting. I look at clients and I do a console.log here of my this.clients. So it's never getting any clients. If I look at my database, I don't have any. And that's because I got rid of the grants. Let's fix this. So we'll stop this. We'll delete the database. Reseed it.
Now if I look at this again, for clients, still no clients, eh? So if I look over here where I'm doing the seed data, this is never saving because I change this to use a transaction. It doesn't know that, so I want to do a data access layer dot save changes asynchronous dot wait And there they are. And so now when I look at the UI, Give it just a second to load. And there's our clients. In grants, I want to do one more thing, which is we want to, in grants, have a new function called get number client applications of my ID. And I want this to return a number. And I want to do a this dot. And we need to have on here my clients called iClient. And then a new clients subscription down here. And then up here we do a clients equals this dot store and we're selecting my clients. And then we are subscribing my clients. Like that. And now I want to do this dot clients dot filter the ones where my grant ID is equal to my ID dot length. And so up here we're going to do num client applications. And then in here we're going to do a num client applications and all we're going to do this is a get number client applications of my element dot id which is like that. And we also need to say, if I look at this as their one for their parent,
Nope. So, in grants, we're going to add in number num client applications. And that looks great. So we're done with grants and we're on to clients. So just for a quick strategy meeting, if I look at the back end for my models, I have op application user, which I need to add in there so you can add additional admins. I have authorization code which we don't need to track unless we want to have it so you can revoke them same thing with a refresh token so i think both of these we want to have for revoking we have client scope client redirect url client origin and client logout redirect urls which i think are all going to be different modals and then our client screen which is what we're going to tackle next so I need to take a short break. Uh, I'm gonna get some water. I'll be back in like 15 to 20 minutes and then we'll pick up where we left off. We're going to uh, scaffold out our clients and get those so we can create them through the UI. Um, and if we have time, we're gonna add the authorization for Angular and ASP.NET with JWTs. But if we don't have time for that, then we will do that tomorrow. So thanks again for staying with me. Don't touch that dial. Make sure you check us out at youtube.pixelhorrorstudios.com, discord.pixelhorrorstudios.com, and I'll see you in just a few minutes. Thanks guys.